QuickBooks Online 2023 Rental Income Setup Service Items. Get ready to start moving on up with QuickBooks Online 2023. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars practice file. We started up in a prior presentation using the 30-day free trial. We also have opened the free QuickBooks Online sample company. If you want the two open at the same time, we suggest using Incognito. You can open the Incognito window if using Google Chrome. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. By selecting the three dots in the browser, incognito window, and then type into the search engine QuickBooks Online test drive. We're going to use the sample company to compare the accounting view, the view that Get Great Guitars is in, and the business view, the one the sample company is in. You can toggle between the two by going to the cog up top and switch the view down below. Let's open some tabs, duplicating them to put reports in like we do every time. Right click on the tab up top to duplicate it. Right click on the duplicated tab to duplicate it. Going back to the middle tab to open up the reports on the left hand side and we want, yes, the favorite report, the balance sheet reports. One of the two faves, the balance sheet. Where do you find that on the business view? We find that, by the way, in the business overview and then the reports on the left hand side. Back to the accounting view, tabbing to the right, down to the reports like we do every time opening up the profit and loss, the income statement, closing the boogie, and changing that range in 010123 to 022823. Let's see the side by side for the months instead of the total, and then run it so we've got the Jan, we've got the Feb, we got the total. Tab it to the middle, close up that boogie, and then change the range 010123 to 022823. And then once again, we run it to refresh it like we do every time so now we're going to be imagining here in our business that we're going to be renting out some of our uh, guitar equipment so this is another kind of business stream that we're thinking of putting together within the business if i go back on over to our flow chart note that if we're looking at the customer cycle at the end of the day we expect revenue to be coming into the business now we have multiple ways that might happen. If the easiest way, if it was gig work and you just got paid by YouTube, like a platform or something, you can wait till it comes through, possibly using bank feeds and record the deposit. If you're at a cash register, you'll typically want to use the create sales receipt and then record the deposit. And if you have to invoice because you're in like an accounting firm or a law firm or landscaping where you have to do the work first, invoice the client increase in the accounts receivable, you'll do that, then receive payment and then make the deposit. So in our case, we've been thinking about a cash register situation primarily when we sell the inventory or we've made invoices on the sale of inventory. We've talked about situations where someone might come in and order a guitar and we might take a down payment for it, in which case we got a payment before we create the invoice. And we talked a little bit about a situation, a job cost kind of situation where we're applying out the billable hours in like a guitar lesson type of situation similar to a law firm or CPA firm that we're then billing clients for. So now we're thinking about a, a different concept which is going to be the rental income. So now we're going to imagine that we have our equipment, we started up the business, we've got the equipment put together, we've invested our capital in the equipment and now we're going to be renting it out as another source of revenue generation. So the process with that is that someone might call us in, we're gonna imagine, and ask for some kind of set of, of rental equipment for possibly a band. And then we're going to uh, invoice it and rent it out. But we're gonna, when we make the estimate, want to collect possibly a deposit, a down payment, so that we are committed to the rental process in the future. And they're more likely to follow through with it. So we might make an estimate 
we might receive the payment first in terms of a deposit, and then we will create the invoice when the actual rental transaction takes place. So that's the, the process we're gonna imagine here to set that up then, we're gonna first set up the items for our new rental revenue stream. So when we set up the items, these are gonna be the things that we sell when we populate the invoice and the estimate. So we're imagining now that if someone comes in and they and they call in, for example, and they say they want to rent like band equipment for a weekend or something like that, we wanna make it as easy as possible for anybody that is on the phone to give them an estimate, possibly take a deposit at that point in time. To do that, we wanna make up we wanna make the items to, to populate the estimate as easy as possible. So let's go down to where those are located. Let's go to the sales tab. Let's go to the products and services, product service items. And then I'm gonna close up the hand boogie. If you're in the uh, business view, by the way, it's under the get paid and pay tab on the left. And then we've got the product and service items. So I'm gonna put this down. So, so now you might say, well, I can just create like a rental item for like every guitar. So we've got multiple guitars down here and we might have amplifiers and drum sets and whatnot. And we'll create a, a rental kind of cost for each of those. And you could do that in like a piecemeal type of, of scenario and, and let them have a lot more customization over the equipment that they're going to be purchasing. But obviously that'll be a lot more difficult in terms of coming up with a someone over the phone trying to come up with like an estimate and collect the deposit. It might be easier oftentimes if you're in a situation like this to come up with a package bundle as your baseline bundle. This is the bare minimum. You can't pay us less rental than this. You can't basically rent out one drumstick or anything like that because it's not worth our time to do that. We're gonna set up the baseline rental and then possibly you can add to it or improve on it from there. So the idea might be, we're gonna give you like two guitars, a drum set, an amplifier, as the baseline bundle with our baseline uh, selection of equipment for that. If you wanna level up the guitars or get another guitar, then we piecemeal possibly up from there in some incremental way. So getting your, getting your items right, whatever you're doing, setting up your items right is gonna be the key thing. You have a similar issue if you were to have a law firm or a bookkeeping firm or something like that and someone wanted a project that was going to be put together how are you going to do that you just can say well how many hours is it going to take whoever's on the phone has no idea we don't really know the client but if we can if we can bill it out by how many transactions it's going to take do you have payroll or not and bundle those kind of things together we can get much more close to some kind of estimate and bill out on something less ambiguous than just say time for example Okay, so I'm going to add some items here. I'm going to go up top and say, let's say we're going to have a new item and it's going to be, we're going to call it a service item because it's going to be rental. So we're not actually, even though it's dealing with the inventory, we're not selling the inventory. We're just renting the inventory. And I'm just going to call the baseline rental. We'll just call it band. I'm going to call it band set uh, number one rental. So, so we're going to start to say, hey, we're renting out band set stuff. And this is our baseline set that you can possibly level up from, but this is this is the baseline. And so I'm gonna not gonna put it into a category. We could make a category for like rental stuff. Maybe let's do that. Let's let's actually make a category for for rental stuff. And so we'll just to practice with the categories. We'll put that in the band set, and then we'll have the price. And then down here, I'm gonna, let's put a little bit more detail in the description. I'm gonna say this includes two guitars, like one drum set and an amplifier, like for a weekend or something like that, or two days, I don't know, two, how long it would be, two days, I don't know. But <laughs> you wanna be specific on that. Well, that's what we're gonna put. And I'm gonna put 2000 here. I have no idea how much that should actually go for. Uh, so, so we're just doing it for the practice problem. It's going to go into then the account. It's currently going to services, which might be good, but if you have another kind of source of income and we have multiple types of rental, it might justify then another income account for rental income. Remember that you don't want to have too many income accounts. I don't want an income account for every item that I sell, but I might want 
for example, to have an income account by the major groups of items, inventory or possibly guitars versus drums or rental versus other service items. So let's add, let's add a new one. I'm gonna hit the drop down and I'm gonna say I want another income account. I'll break it out. And so we're gonna make an income account as we go, hitting the drop down. I want it to be an income type of account. Uh, this subcategory, other primary income, I'll say. And then I'm just gonna call it equipment. Equipment rental income. Let's call it. No sub account, we'll keep it as is. Let's save it and close it. So there we have it. Shouldn't be any tax applied to it because it's a service item. So uh, tax, let's see if I can go into the tax, edit the tax and say that we want it to be non-tax and then okay. And then, so that looks good. So let's save it and close it. Now, remember if I just go onto the income statement over here, that our income accounts, what I'm trying to point out is that the income accounts, you, you don't usually want a whole lot of income statement accounts and you don't usually want to set up an income statement account for every item that you sell or every customer, which is a common error that sometimes people make. Now, sometimes you might deviate from that general rule because if you're in like gig work and you're getting paid by multiple platforms like a YouTube or an Uber or, or multiple platforms like that, then, and you're just using bank feeds to record your transactions instead of using the invoices and sales receipts, then you might just make an income account called like Google or YouTube or something like that because you're losing some of the added detail that you would have on the sub ledgers to break out your income line items by item and by customer. But uh, if, you, if, if you're doing the full service accounting for most types of businesses, uh, then then it's it's you don't want to have too many income accounts because you do have the sub ledgers if you want to break it out by customer and you don't want your income statement to be a big tediously looking thing you want it to be the summary document and you can go to the other sub accounts and ledgers for more detail all right so there's that one let's go back to the tab to the left and now let's say okay that's my baseline item which is now under uh, the rental, I've got my rental uh, stuff. Let's add another one. So I'm gonna say a uh, new up top and I'm gonna say, okay, what if I, what if they wanna add on to the baseline? I won't let them rent something for less than that because it's not worth the time. But if they wanna level up, then I'm gonna say, okay, then we're gonna say if they wanna level up, they can add, add a guitar maybe, add one guitar to the standard package rental one package we'll say and so i'm going to copy that and then i'm going to say this is going to be in the rental category i'll put that here as well the price let's just say that that's going to be 50 dollars. that's going to be part of rental income as well so i'm going to call it can i just type it in here rental rental equipment rental there it is hold on a second equipment rental income yes Okay, and then short term rental of tangible, it's trying to select a category. That's probably the best way to go. But I'm just going to tell it not to apply the sales tax. I'm just going to tell it instead of it's trying to help out by selecting the category, but and which is great usually, but I'm just going to go generic here and say that there's no tax applied to it. So I'm going to say save that. And so now if I scroll down, uh, we've got the, the rental item down below. And you can see down here that it's, it's in the category of rental. So the rental categories are in this little subtext. Okay, let's do another one. And let's pretend they wanna add, if they wanna add an amplifier now to make it like super loud. I'm gonna say new. So they're like, dude, I really wanna piss off my neighbors. Can we make it louder? And so we're like, okay, we get a lot of requests for that. So if you want to add an amplifier to rental one, we can upgrade or add an amplifier. And we're going to put that into the category of rental again. Boom. And let's say that's going to be $40. I'm just making up the numbers here. It's going to go into rental uh, equipment rental again. Equipment rental. And so let's do that and then again it's trying to help us out with the tax but i'm just going to do generic generic non-taxable and okay 
and save it and close it. So if I scroll down, then these are grouped together with that little sub that little sub line for the rental items down below. So it's not in alphabetical order, even though it starts with an A because it's grouped with the rental stuff. Okay, so now the idea is that if someone calls in now and says, I want to rent a band set, and we have just someone answering the phone and wants to give them an estimate, they can hit the plus button and say, okay, what do you, what do you want to do? And then we can, we can say whoever it is and we can just a generic, let's just go, go customer AAA here. I won't record this. I'm just going to show you and they call in, they could say, okay, you wanted, you want the rental, rental equipment band set. So that's going to be, I said bank set. That's great. Okay. I should change that. But you want that. That's our baseline. We don't have anything under that. And then if they want to add on to that, then we can add on, you know, rental or add, add, you know, a guitar or something like that. And that can help us to generate our estimate. And then maybe we have a policy of collecting like 10% of it for down payment so that we can hold on to that band set equipment for them. So I'm going to, I'm going to close this out. I'm going to go, so I'm going to, do you want to leave without saving? I'm going to say yes. I'm going to go back into my products and rentals and then go down here and show you how you can change the error, which I did on purpose, just to show you that if I, if I then want to edit, let's, let's close up the boogie. So if I want to edit this, I can just edit it and then change it to bank or band set from bank set. It's not a bank set. It's not like a toy bank or something what are you doing customers are gonna laugh at you all right so now <laughs> save it okay confirm they want to i'm just gonna do the tax thing here they're trying to change the tax thing again so i'm just gonna say none all right so there it is so no change on the on the financial statements yet so we'll be so no so we won't uh, do the trial balance thing but there will be changes in the future and this stuff we did now will lay the foundation for those changes so we'll tune in next time